Today we're going to learn how to integrate the teleporting functionality using the XR Interaction Toolkit and then we're going to test it using our Oculus Quest headset. So let's jump right in. First thing that we need to make sure is to set up uh, our project. We're going to create a new project and it's going to be a 3D template. Make sure to install the XR Interaction Toolkit as well and make sure to configure your project just so it starts working or is already loading the Oculus plugin uh, in whenever we start doing some plugin or builds into our Oculus Quest. So if you have never said this before, basically the XR Interaction Toolkit, just so it works with your Oculus Quest, well, make sure to look at one of my videos. It's going to pop up either at the top or I'm just either way, I'm going to add the description. Uh, I'll link in the description as well. And because it is crucial, guys, uh, if you don't know that, well, all of pretty much all of what we're going to talk about right now is not going to work for you. But if you have it, good, we can get started. One of the things that we need to start uh, to make sure that we have already is we need to include an XR rig and an XR interaction manager. The one in particular that I use, uh, the XR rig that I use is, um, remember if you go to the game object option and you select the XR uh, option as well, there will be two, room scale XR rig and then the stationary XR rig. I pick the stationary XR rig now, in order to go keep moving forward, I need to teach you a few things just so you really understand what's going on here. If we would like to include that teleporting functionality. So remember that we have this XR rig. If you click on it, you will see that we have our XR rig script. If we keep looking inside of the game object, we'll see that we're gonna have the main camera. And we have our track post driver, something that is required. So let me explain you a little bit of what's going on here. This is how the system works. This is the locomotion system. We need to have a locomotion system in our scene as a first scene. And the locomotion system is what it is in charge of telling or handling the movements of the scene based on the, the different options that the XR interaction toolkit offers. And then we're going to have to have a locomotion system and then we're going to have to have a locomotion provider. Now, that locomotion provider, what it's going to do is, is communicate to this system and it's going to check like, hey, locomotion system, are you busy? Can I start executing some type of a movement? In this case, teleporting. Can I move? If so, I would like to request access just so I have the permissions to start moving between different places. Now, once I finish the process of movement, moving around my zine, I'm going to say like, hey, the provider is going to say to a locomotion system, like, hey, I already finished my functionality. I don't need to move anymore. So I don't need exclusive access to, uh, to a locomotion system to prevent from other providers to start blocking certain type of functionality so what i'm gonna say is like hey i'm good to go just i'm just gonna let you go and whatever whichever other providers would like to have exclusive access well they have now permission or they have the freedom to ask the locomotion system that you can request that they can request exclusive access so that's one part now we're gonna have the interactor and then the interactable and as you might see we'll have this xr rate interactor within each of the controllers this is what is going to allow us to detect like hey can i find any object can i detect any object that has a way to interact with that i can interact with and that's the main reason we have another component in another object that will be called interactable Okay, so enough talking and now we're going to include our providers and our locomotion system. As a rule of thumb, you can include it anywhere, but it's based if you include those uh, systems or the locomotion system and the locomotion provider within the XR rig. That's just something that the Unity team recommends. So in that way, we're going to do so. We're now in our XR rig game object. 
and we're gonna include a new component. So that component is gonna be the locomotion system. Cool. Now I want you to stop here real quick for a second and then you can check it out that it's got an XR rig property. Usually you, you will go ahead and detect if there's any XR rig within your zine and then you are gonna drag and drag and drop in there. But as a default functionality, what the whole system is gonna do, what the locomotion system script is gonna do is like, hey, I'm gonna find uh, if there's any XR rig already available there, I'm just gonna find it, I'm just gonna attach it to this system. So actually we don't really need to, or in case we have multiple extra rigs well that's a different thing and probably we'll have to include that particular extra rig into our locomotion system but once again we don't need it to include it so we're good there now the second thing that we need to include is a locomotion provider but the functionality that we're gonna do or we're gonna work with is the teleporting if you type locomotion provider you will notice that there's nothing available now, if you type teleporting provider or teleportation provider, you will say like, okay, but you were talking about, you were talking about locomotion provider. Well, if you want to see the teleportation provider is actually a locomotion provider. It inherits from the locomotion provider. If you are not very knowledgeable in programming or the scripts whatsoever, it will be easy for you if you start checking the actual script. So we have a script here, teleportation provider. We're just gonna double click. It's gonna open our IDE. In my case is Visual Studio. If you see teleportation provider inherits from the locomotion provider. If you are not familiar with this concept, that just basically means that the teleportation provider is taking all of the elements, properties, functions, methods that the locomotion provider class has. And then I'm going to apply it to my teleportation provider and the teleportation provider is going to have extra functionality or extra methods that I can uh, use as well. Basically, we're talking just about teleportation provider is just a different way to see uh, locomotion provider once again we have in here a system option and in system option they recommend to include or to attach a locomotion system it works in a similar fashion uh, like in the locomotion system with the xr rig so in this case if we have several multiple locomotion system systems we can simply drag and drop this locomotion system component into the teleportation provider but the teleportation provider what it's gonna do is i'm gonna check if there's multiple if there's at least one locomotion system if there is i'm just gonna simply include it by default so if you don't have any option available there or selected there that's okay because it's gonna find automatically the locomotion system now remember that we were talking or at some point we we're talking about the left hand controller and right hand controller having the x-ray interactor cool so now that we have the x-ray interactor or an, just an interactor game object we need to have also an interactor so those different objects can interact each other perfect we just have already we're just halfway through on that scenario we just have our left right hand controller with our x-ray interactor or xr ray interactor the only thing that is missing is to include an interactable and this is what the cool part is gonna be in order to include an interactable we're gonna go to our game object uh, we're gonna find our xr option and if you see there are different interactors as well and there are interactable options as well however for our particular scenario we're gonna select these two options we can select either the teleportation area or the teleportation anchor and you will see in a second that they already have a component a script already that is an interactable script so for this particular scenario i'm gonna show you the teleportation area and in fact i'm actually gonna show you as well the the teleportation anchor as well just so you will see the difference as well between these two components now 
Something that I want you to do is to go ahead and copy this teleportation area and let's include two more. So let's include two more and what I want you to do is to move those teleportation areas to different places. So I'm just going to move this area over here and the other area I'm just going to move it to one side and let's let's keep it in the front i guess sorry let's keep it in the front now as i promised we're also going to include the teleportation anchor so let's go back to our game object option let's click on xr rig and let's find the teleportation anchor now we have our teleportation anchor and what we're gonna do is i want to locate it in here in the left side so i'm just gonna move it to the left side move it all the way there now i would like to give them colors just so i could detect or easily detect whether this is a teleportation area or a teleportation anchor just because all of them look, look white so in the assets folder we're gonna create a new folder let's call this folder materials now the materials let's gonna in the materials folder let's create a new material and let's call it what color we can say red a speaker red perfect and let's go ahead and change the color let's go to where the albedo option is let's find the color let's change it to red see a little bit darker maybe good let's go ahead as well and create a different color and let's create another material first Let's call this green. We're going to call it green and we're going to change or find a green color as well. Let's close it. Now we have our colors. Now for our teleportation areas, we're going to set or to include the green color. So I'm going to drag and drop it to each of the teleportation areas. Good. And then for our teleportation anchor, we're gonna leave it as red. Cool. Now we have a nicely a nice way to to detect where each which area is an anchor or teleportation anchor or teleportation area. Now another thing that I want you to take a look at is either click on the teleportation area or a teleportation anchor. And start looking at what this game object already has. First things that you are going to look at is just regular mesh. And this is important. It's got a mesh collider. This is crucial in the process of being able to interact with different objects. Remember that we have the XR ray interactor. In order for the XR ray interactor to interact with different objects, those different objects need to have a mesh collider or any type of collider but in this particular case it comes with a mesh collider so that's that's good to go another thing that i want you to take a look at is within the mesh collider there's a mesh option that mesh option what it tells you is like hey what is the area where I can interact or I can collide or interact with different other objects? What I mean with that is that all this plane area, as the mesh was selected as plane, all this plane surrounded here is going to be able to collide with this whole object. But let's say that, for example, that we have a different object. Or a different mesh let's select that it's gonna be a cylinder let's select it and let's change it now in case I would like to interact with this particular area I only have to be able to find wherever this mesh collider is located which is the cylinder and if I'm not colliding in this little cylinder area then I'm not gonna be able to interact with the whole area that we have in here 
So that's something to take into account in the future. We're gonna show you, show some examples as well as we go in the process of making the teleportation system work. But first thing, just, just change it back, uh, find the mesh option again and change it back to plane. Just so we have all the area available to, to detect collisions. And the most important thing that you will see is that there's a teleportation area script. In the case of the teleportation anchor, there's gonna be a teleportation anchor script. Now, what this is gonna allow us to do is detect whether, hey, this component, this area has this script. If you have that script and then the interactor or the XR ray interactor is pretty much detecting that there's a location or a teleportation area that I can go, then by triggering certain type of button or trigger, I'm gonna be able to move. Enough of talking here and let's show you what I'm talking about when it's about detecting collisions and interacting with different objects. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna click on play here within the editor. I want you to take a look at this little red ray that we're looking at. That ray that you're seeing is the XR Interactor ray. If you deploy that or you build this within your Oculus Quest, you will see two rays. One for the right hand and one for the left right hand controller. Now, let's take a look at one of the hand controllers. Let's pick that left hand controller. Let's go ahead all the way down to the bottom. And I want you to start looking at this option, this component called XR Interactor Line Visual. If you take a look at it, you will see that there's these two different options, valid color gradient and invalid color gradient. They are telling us it's just these are the colors used by default to be able to detect whether, hey, the object that I, that this ray is interacting or detecting is got a way to interact with. If not, it's gonna show the red color. If it is, if it provides a way to interact with, it's gonna show a white color. Now, as you might see, you might be wondering like, hey, the but the red, the ray interactor looks like it's interacting with this teleportation area. Not really, if you start looking at it from a different perspective, the ray never touches that teleportation area. So let's gonna, Play it a little bit with the, the rotation of it and let's gonna select the XR rig. Let's press the E key and then let's try to move it a little bit towards so the, the XR uh, ray detects the teleportation area. And if you notice, once we moved it and it's detecting this teleportation area, now it's gonna say like, hey, I can talk to you, I can communicate with you, and this is a good object that I can probably interact with, and because of the teleportation area script, we can pretty much teleport from this area to this area. Good, so now let's just gonna quickly test this with other different areas. So let's go ahead and test uh, this, uh, this XR rig, the camera, so it points to different areas. So if we start moving the camera to the right side, you see it changes to red. It doesn't find anything and it backs, it changes back to white. It's detecting another area that I can interact with. Now, if we go back all the way to the left side and try to see if I can interact with the, with the teleportation anchor, you will see that I can detect and therefore I can interact with this area. Let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go ahead and create or go to our build settings and make sure you have selected your Oculus Quest. And let's click on build and run and let's call this APK teleporting, perfect. And let's see what the product is. Okay guys, this is the product. As you can see, we are in our scene. I have my two XR rays interactors, one for the left and one for the right hand controller. As you notice, if I move them to a particular location where they can detect other areas that have interactables, they're gonna change to white. 
That means that they are gonna, it's gonna tell me like, hey, I can go to these areas. And if I press the trigger, then I'm gonna be able to move from different areas, as you, you saw in here. I did it to the anchor, to the teleportation anchor. Now I'm moving to the other area. So that means that our teleportation functionality was successfully complete. You might still wondering about what's going on with the anchor and the area what's the difference and just look at the way i'm look at the way i'm shifting or teleporting to the green areas and you will see that if i pr pretty much find or detect like in the corner of the of the area of the green area i can move to the corner of that area see one more time you see I'm pretty much in the corner of one area. Now, let's take a look at the red area. I'm in the center here. That's the anchor that we're defining. And in here, I can show you more that if I try to find other places, I'm currently, I'm pressing the trigger and I'm not able to shift areas because I'm already within the main anchor that we detect or we place. By default, it places it in the center. So that's why we're not able to move. Even though we have a big area, we're not able to move anywhere. Instead, the teleportation areas, if we just find any area, we can just shift or teleport to any of these areas. So that's something to take into account uh, whenever you're building your projects or your games, which teleportation area or anchor you want to use, which works better for you. Remember I told you about these mesh colliders and the mesh that is used within each one of these mesh colliders? So let's gonna go ahead and quickly change one of these areas. And I want to change this that is in the middle, the teleportation area one. I'm gonna find the mesh collider and I'm just gonna quickly change it to once again to, to the cylinder. Let's pick the cylinder. And let's go ahead and build it real quick and let's test it with our Oculus Quest. Cool. Remember we made that change. I just want to show you real quick if I'm just moving or trying to move my array throughout any of the different areas that we did not modify. It's effectively changing the color to white. It's detecting that it's, I, I, it's colliding with those objects. Now let's take a look at the one middle. And look at it, if I go to the corners, it doesn't detect anything. But if we place the XR rays around the area where we place the cylinder, it detects that basically I can interact with this whole area that we have that. Make sure that there are certain areas that you want to interact with. Maybe it's not the complete area, but there's just a certain particular area that the user needs to point at you so they can pretty much teleport to those areas now look at now here even though i switch i teleported to that area i still try to find other places if i want to teleport there and i already switched there but yeah over here i'm trying to find other places and i cannot find a way to teleport even though i'm within my same area that's good to know in the future in case you're planning to add certain type of functionality Perfect, now you saw what we could do in order to make the teleporting functionality work. Finally, but not least, I wanted to show you something else. I wanted to show you that, as you might have seen, the XRA interactor, it's just a straight the line, is just a straight that it detects. I wanna show you that there are different other options as well. If you wanna see or change them, those options, uh, the way that the line shape, or the ray is shape, you can go to either of the left or right hand controllers. In my case, I'm in the left hand controller and go ahead and find the XR ray interactor script component. Inside there, you're gonna find this line type. And if you click on there, you're gonna find that there's a straight line, there's a projectile curve, and there, there's a vizier curve. Let's say, for example, I wanna change it to projectile. Cool. And let's go ahead and click on play. You can see now the way this is shaped, this line shape is more in the shape of a projectile. And this sometimes can be 
beneficial in scenarios like this. In this particular scenario, I would preferably use a projectile because it will do that curve needed for plane or for straight plane, plane objects. Now, let's say that in case I would like to modify this area and I rotate it in this way. Now, for that case, it's better for you to use the straight line just so because there's, there's really no need for you to, to use the, the projectile unless you, you have any particular reasons. Once again, I guess it's just a particular taste of what you prefer or what you're looking into your uh, games. But I wanted to show you that option and if you want to see it, we can test it in a second. Cool, so this is what I wanted to show you after building it with the projectile style and ray. I personally believe that for plain objects like this will work for the, you know, this rotated object. I don't know, I think it's better to use the straight line. I just wanted to show you either way. Cool, so hopefully you're able to integrate the teleporting functionality and you understand all the concepts and all the basics. Now, let's try to do the same thing, but try to apply this same functionality to one of the game objects that we could find in the asset store. Let's go ahead and find something in the asset store, a terrain or some type of environment, and let's, let's try and see how that goes. So first things first, let's go to the asset store. Uh, what I'm gonna type is terrain low poly. Uh, we're gonna find several different terrains available. And as you know, I like to pick the free options as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check the free assets uh, checkbox. I've played with this before, the low poly ground. So I'm gonna pick that one. If you don't you have it just download it and then go ahead and import it but make sure and this is just important if you're gonna use this make sure to just include the materials and the mesh i really don't want to have a lot of things going on on my project as well as scripts going on that i don't really understand uh, i will have to just go through through the scripts and understand what's going on and also it might affect our current project so anyway Let's pick the materials and mesh and let's import. Good. Our low poly ground was imported. And let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the mesh folder. And then I'm gonna find this mesh low poly ground. That one, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it within my teleporting scene. Good. We have our little kind of an island looking. I would like to include that functionality as well so I could move to different little islands. Why not copying it and pasting it, more of them, and let's go ahead as well and let's move the copies to a different position. I'm gonna move it left, one to the right. Let's see what's the position of our camera rig. I'm able to see okay here, so that's fine. Now we have to make sure that these grounds or these little islands have colliders. And in particular, I would like to find this grass. So let's go ahead and check this one out, uh, the very first one. And I'm sorry for some of you, this might be a little bit of confusing or if you don't understand, but is this in, in, in Spanish, some of these game objects? Uh, we're gonna have a manzana, which is an apple. I ended up teaching Spanish here. Uh, this is suelo verde, or it's just grass, pretty much what they want to say. Uh, we got tierra, or it's just ground. We got that tree, so that's that's easy there. And then we have valley, which is bucket. But anyway, so let's go ahead and let's find this grass, which is suelo verde. We found the grass and let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the first thing that I noticed is that we got the mesh filter, mesh render, but we are lacking of an important thing, the collider. We need a collider here, so let's go ahead and include a mesh collider. Make sure that the mesh matches, mesh of the collider matches the one from the, the mesh applied to the to that game object. So in this case, it's already applied to it automatically, so that's fine. Good. Now, 
what I want to do is to include a teleporting teleportation anchor script or teleportation area. I, I'm gonna use that one, it's better. Uh, so it, I can get the full range of the, the grass. Let's gonna apply the same concept to our other grass. Let's find that object, the grass. Let's include mesh collider as well. Let's include the teleportation anchor or area. Well, as let's find the last little island. Let's find the grass one more time. Mesh collider as well as teleportation area. Good. And that should be it. We should go ahead and build this but you know before going going ahead and doing that let's just test this and see if we're actually detecting anything with our xr ray anchors so if i move the position i can quickly tell that the one or the array that's got the projectile line shape is interacting or is pretty much colliding with the grass and is changing to the white color so that's a good good thing that we're able to detect the grass now let's go ahead and build this real quick and let's see what's the final output okay guys this is a final output i just integrated the teleporting functionality just a matter of probably two minutes it was fairly quick the process i found something from the asset store i imported those objects and then i included the teleporting functionality look at it how simple it was I highly encourage you to find different objects from the asset store and try to integrate the same functionality and see how that goes. I hope you were able to integrate the teleporting functionality. If you like what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you want to stay tuned for future videos about XR development tutorials in Unity. See you until the next time.